This is Andy Purawal for Boxing Social in association with Betfred. And for the first time in what seems like an eternity, I'm delighted to be joined by Dave Calder. Unfortunately, it's over Zoom and it's not in person. But Dave, how are you doing? I'm very good, mate. How are you? I'm good, mate. I'm good. Obviously, I'm glad that obviously we've seen Boxing Return these past couple of weeks. Mm. And there's two shows for us to look forward to this week as well. But how have you been? How have you found, obviously, the past four or five months? Um... It's been a challenge, same as it has for, for everybody. But uh, I'll be honest with you, I, I found it. I found it all right. It's you know the kids have been great. Um, it's been nice to spend like all day with the kids and things like that. Um, so so yeah, it's been great. We've we've kept busy. We've trained. We've you know my little boy with his football. My daughter's worked hard in it with the music and things like that. Um, done FaceTime sessions with the boys, but. When we got back in the gyms, that, then then I'm most happiest because that's that's when the real work starts. Do you know what I mean, it's a lot a lot better then, and you know, um, yeah, you're not um, playing at it really. So yeah, it's good. What was it like when you did first get back into the gym? Was you impressed by anyone in particular? Did anyone come back in better shape than you imagined they would do, or did everybody come yeah, Jordan. In where you imagined? Jordan. Um, absolutely fa- unbelievable, unbelievable attitude and mentality throughout lockdown. Um, we were doing the FaceTime sessions, uh, so his wife or his mother would be holding mainly his, his wife would be holding the, the camera. Um, his dad would put the pads on. His dad used to coach him as a kid, so I would ask him exactly what, what I needed doing, just his speed, doing you know, things like that. Um, slowing things down would work on just like literally two combinations uh, or two movements uh, a session drill it drill it drill it drill it and um it paid off it paid off um mentally he's matured a lot as well um the weight seems to have come off his shoulders and um because of that i'm getting the best out of him in the gym you know since we've come back he's 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 been absolutely brilliant um you know touch wood um it, it, it's literally seriously the best camp I've ever had with a fighter as in how everything's gone brilliant like every sparring session has been brilliant you know he's he's, he's followed out the instructions he's, he's carried them out everything's been brilliant he's, I'm really really impressed with him he's, he's, he's gone to another level in terms of ability um, but he's he's, he's jumped leaped levels in terms of maturity and that was something for me was a big thing for him because he came you know two and a half nearly three years ago or whatever um a boy um in shadows not having no confidence um not understanding how how talented this you know him, himself he was um and that bit by bit, it's a process. It is with every fighter, it's a process. It's all about learning about themselves. Um, he's had a very challenging 18 months that could have broken a lot of people, um, especially with the illness. Um, you know, there's points where we didn't think he was going to have a box again. Um, he's come through that, become fit again, become stronger than he ever has been. You know, he's, He's working with Scott Robinson now as a as the nutritionist. Danny Wilson has always been his S and C coach, does a fantastic job. But Scott Robinson, in terms of nutrition, what he's allowed Jordan to do in his sessions because the food has been bang on. Now Jordan's a clever kid, and, and his nutrition has always been good. You know, he's been he's been very good. But you're talking about percentages that can create a massive difference in a fighter, and and I can't speak any highly. As you know, for for Scott, because um, it's not just his physical appearance. Everything about him, his core strength, everything about him is 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 leap from. I'm getting the best in his sessions because he's not coming. He's not he's not feeling tired. He's fueling. He's he's properly fueled for each session. Um, everything, and you're seeing the results of that in in every single session. Be it you know, be it a sparring session, be it just a boxing session. Danny's over the moon with his 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 S and C stuff and and things like that. So genuinely, he has been fantastic, and you know, I, it's just all about doing it on fight night now. When you go back to Tinoco and the defeat from Tinoco, then you know he went away to Italy. One day he's obviously got mm-hmm. had his illness in between his, well, his health issues. 
mm-hmm. and now he come back and he was meant to fight before lockdown and then he got pulled off that because obviously yeah. those weren't going on. In a weird way, do you feel that it's kind of benefited him to have gone through yeah. those experiences? 100%. You know, I, um, I think I said to Johnny, uh, Johnny Nelson, we was talking, and, and I genuinely mean it. If, if I had the opportunity to turn back the clock, bear in mind this Jordan's a young kid, he's only just 26. If I had the opportunity to turn back the clock and for what to have happened uh, against Tinoco not to have happened, would I, would I turn that, back that clock and change history? And, and I wouldn't because the one thing, like I said to you, is the mentality of Jordan. Back then he was still a boy. He was still, you know, some, some people, I, I didn't mature until, until I became a dad, you know, different, and I, I was in my 29th year. People matured differently at different stages. And, um, you know, he's not, a, he's not a street kid. He's not a, he's not a, he's not a thug type of kid. So he, he hasn't had to mature quickly in terms of life and, and difficulties and things like that. Um, and the problems that he's had to face throughout his career, being inactive before he comes to me, being inactive for 18 months, things like that, they were big things, but, but they were kind of things that erode your confidence. And then he had a, went on a crest of a wave. He was successful. We, you know, we had, a, we had a great run. And then obviously came crashing down against Tinoco. And the doubts and, and the um, upset and everything in his mind festered and, and it was hard work and it took a lot of talking to, but he's, you know, there's myself, his family, he, he's got good people around him that understand. Um, so it took a while. And then obviously he came back in Italy and we thought things were, you know, that's it, we're going to crack on. But then um, with the thyroid issue, um, which was underlying and, and you know, uh, it was something that it was major, and and I think he's he's had a lot of time to reevaluate. He's been married, he's got married. Um, then we had the lockdown situation, and how we handled that. He's had a lot of time to to process and to think things, take things on board, understand that what how he needs to deal with things. Um, and it's just made him mature. It's it's just become more of a mature fight when you see him in the ring. When you see him when he walks into the gym, he hasn't got the pressure. He always training because you know, he, he, he's such a perfectionist that's that's a great great attitude but also sometimes that can weigh you down a lot um and it's kind of like he would do at three minutes around in sparring it would be great for two minutes 52 seconds and it'd be an eight second patch 10 second patch where he just might get caught with a few shots and then that would eat him up and then he would come back to the corner. You can see it on him where he's thinking about that too much and that's spoiling his great work because he's not giving himself the credit for the great work that he does. Now, if you don't give yourself credit, and I'm not talking about blowing smoke up your own ass, but if you don't give yourself credit for the good stuff that you do as well, you can never build that confidence because all because you're a perfectionist, you're chasing perfection, but every time you get touched with a jab or you get caught with a right hand or... or if you dwell on that, you have to acknowledge it, you have to understand why that happened, take it away and work on that. But if you let that eat at you, then you're not, you're not ever going to improve your confidence because you're always going to be pissed off with yourself. And that's how it used to be. And now he's understanding that, you know, hang on a minute, when you watch Andre Ward, Andre Ward gets it. You know, Andre Ward got dropped against Kovalev. He's, he got dropped in earlier on in his career against Darnell Boom. Mayweather gets hit. Pernell Whitaker, one of the greatest, for me, defensively, one of the greatest, if not the greatest defensive boxer in my time, definitely. Um, he would get it. But they don't dwell on it. You know, they don't, they don't dwell on it. They don't, it doesn't upset them. You know, they're, they're known as defensive geniuses. They're not, they're not, you know, they, they don't go in there to get it. They want to make you miss. But they understand this is boxing. You are going to get hit. And he just seems to have understood that, caught with that. And his mentality has completely changed. So he's now he's focused and sticking to a plan and, and sticking to what he has to do in every round, round after round after round. He's just getting better and better and better. And because he's now freeing up, 
because he's now believing in himself and he's seeing how, how talented he is, he's freeing himself. And, and I'm seeing the best out of him. You know, we went to America last summer where we were sparring with people like Manny Robles and, and you know, Selby and people like that. Man, he, even though everyone was raving about how, what he was doing, he, it, it still didn't resonate with him. Now he's understanding. Now, let's move forward, obviously, on to this Saturday night, the, the bout with mm-hmm. Luis Bellotti. And I asked Jordan this earlier, and he said he sees it as having more pressure on himself. But in your opinion, who do you think there's more pressure on? Jordan, who obviously he has that loss to Tinoco, came back for in Italy, but then he's had you know, issues outside of the ring. And Reese, who suffered a few losses in his career, and by his own admission, if he isn't a successful on Saturday night, it may well be his last chance uh, in boxing to achieve what he wants to. Who do you think there's more pressure on, Jordan or Reese? If you buy into what other people's opinions are and what other people think, then then there's massive pressure on both kids because, you know, Jordan's come back and, and to get beat, if he's going to buy into, oh, it's the end of the world, then it is going to feel like the end of the world to him. Um, Reese, if he feels that if he's got one more loss and then then he has to retire, then that's that's what he's carrying into the fight. But these are people's perceptions. Fighters get beat in this game. This is the difference between UFC and boxing. In UFC, fighters get beat. Nobody cares. Move on to the next fight, the next big challenge, the next you know improve in the gym, come back a better fighter. The fight they're having real fights and real tests and they're improving the fighters, you know. Nobody really care. I, you know, nobody talk. I don't hear anybody talking about records in in in, in UFC, you know. Um, Darren Till got beat the other night, didn't he? Yeah. I don't think he's particularly bothered thinking that. Oh, that's it. I, I've reached my level. I'm never going to get back to the top. I'm never going to do this. People don't think like that in UFC. But in boxing, for some reason. And promoters have got a lot, of, a lot to do with this. Like I hear things that, that Eddie says when, when he comes out with it, and he says, "Oh, you know, they've got nowhere to go, or it's a long way back." Listen, it's about what your mentality is, right? Johnny Nelson lost about twelve fights. He ended up being unbeaten world champion for about seven years. Prince Hussein lost one fight, and then he was never the same man. He came back out of fight, and then was never the same man again. How's your mentality? What what sort of what sort of outlook have you got on the sport and your position in the sport? If you're going to buy into everybody else's as as perceptions, where they're saying, "Oh, once you've got beat, that's it. You'll never do it." Look through history. Look look at the amount of fighters that have had success coming off. You know, they've, they've had a little bad patch and they've come through. Tevin Farmer, you know, look at what he achieved after losing a lot early on. You know, there's a lot of fighters. Arturo Gatti, and you look at what he achieved. I don't buy into that shit. You know, I, I listen. If a fighter takes it on, on board, and if it ruins him mentally, then yeah, then yeah, then then I understand that. But it, you're only ever one, maybe two fights, two good wins away from getting a crack at something big. Derek Chisora, you know, how many times have people? Oh, he's had that same that same done now. That same done now. Surely comes back has a couple of great wins. He's back. He's back up there. You know. You, it's, it's what you take from Jordan learnt a lot from his defeat he learnt a lot from his defeat as a man he learnt a lot from his defeat and for me I imagine Reese Blot is learnt I don't know the kid I know him to say hello to him I love the kid I don't know him personally and um, I imagine he's learnt a lot from his defeats so if you lose and at that time it wasn't your time but you learn from it, you take it away, you come back as a better fighter. Why can't you carry on? Why can't you end up being successful? You know, because there's plenty of fighters out there that have got fancy looking records. There's plenty of unbeaten champions out there that have fought nobody. They haven't had that experience. And sometimes losing, you gain shit in there that no unbeaten fighter can, can, can touch, you know? And listen, for people that are, oh, yeah, look, look at Mayweather. Mayweather's a different man, you know. I'm not talking about that sort of fighter. I'm talking about the majority of fighters, and I'm talking about the majority of people out there that write fighters off because they have a loss. Or they have a, they have a crossroads fight, and it's like people say, oh, two young fighters fighting each other, they shouldn't be fighting each other yet. Why not? Why not? George Groves, James Gale fought together at unbeaten early doors. 
didn't hurt either of them. They both ended up to becoming world champion. You know, and and I see that as the, for these two fighters, the two Reese is an exciting fighter. He's 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 very powerful. Um, he's a fighter that you'd want to watch. If he wants to carry on after, well, what's saying that he doesn't he, he doesn't fight that featherweight division is shit up. What saying he didn't fight somebody else and then knock them out and then he's straight back into a big fight and, and, and then he knocks that guy out and he's fighting for a title. You know, it's the same thing. It's, it's, this, is, this is boxing. People are too quick to write fighters off. What do you expect, <clears throat> what do you expect from Reese on Saturday night? How do you expect the fight between himself and Jordan to play out? Um, I expect pressure, pressure, pressure. I expect him to want to make Jordan uncomfortable. I expect to want him to, to work Jordan's body. Um, uh, and then come with shots over the top, but just just relentless, willing to walk through absolutely everything, and that's how we've trained for. That's what we've trained for. You know, we've changed up a little bit just in case Reese boxes like he did against uh, uh, Ryan Walsh and, and, and looks to box, and, and you know Jordan has to chase. Maybe uh, you know you know you never know. You never know. But we've prepared for a, a horrible, horrible, hard hard hitting high intensity willing to leave it all in the ring opponent and that's what we're prepared for Eddie made a point that when boxing returned you know certainly at least on his shows he wanted to make as many 50-50 bouts as possible mm. do you see Gil Bellotti as a 50-50 bout I know you're going to favour Jordan obviously but do you see as why people might look at it as a 50-50 of course I can see why people yeah of course I can see it. That's, that's just what I'm saying to you people look at at fights and say, so, well, he's he's just got lost and that. But, oh, that's it. He's he's done. He's got no chance. He's not as good as what we thought. So I understand. I understand that. And I, and, and Reese is a, a quality fighter. But, you know, we're not taking Reese Bellotti lightly at all. I don't buy into. This is what I'm saying to you. Is I don't buy into just because somebody's got some losses on his record, oh, you'll be all right. I don't buy into that bullshit. So we've prepared for an absolute beast, an absolute monster. That's what that's what Jordan's prepared for. That's what I've I've made sure that his his mentality has been in, uh, that he's done it himself. I've I've made sure that we've trained for a guy that's gonna be, you know, a whirlwind. Dave, just one thing I didn't get to ask um, Jordan about. I want to ask you: he's sparring. Obviously, from the date that the fight was announced till we actually coming about, and we've had lockdown restrictions in place. How have you found actually trying to get sparring that you was would be capable of kind of copying we've had some great we've we've had some great sparring we've had some great sparring lee wood has been a fantastic help lee's a hell of a fighter the best thing about lee as well is that he keeps himself in shape you know he's always got his eight pack rocking he's always in good shape you know and and he knew that i would need him for for jordan for sparring for this so they've done plenty of rounds of sparring with, with lee wood um We've had, what else we had? We've had, uh, hope he's filled in just for tricking his sharpness, you know, doing different things. Um, we've had, uh, I'll tell you what, it was a brilliant spot. Um, oh, I fucking hell, uh, Leon Woodstock, you know, we've had, we've had fantastic spars with Leon Woodstock. That's been amazing. Um, so we've had some really good spars for Jordan and um, for Lee's Bellotti. You know, Lee Wood's a big puncher, long, tall. You know, he's, he's got range on Jordan. Leon's a weight division above. Got range on Jordan. You know, relentless. Um, so we've had some good work. You know, I can't... Considering the circumstances, we have had some great work. We really have. And, and you know, I'm, I'm, I'm over the moon with those guys for, for the sparring that we've had. Dave, what's your understanding of how fight fight week will play out? Obviously, compare it to a normal fight week, it will be very different. What's your understanding yeah. from when you arrive tomorrow till after the fight? Uh, how do you see it all playing out? What have you been told about it? Um, so tomorrow we arrive, I think about half past one, uh, get tested about two o'clock, have to go to his room, stay in his room, quarantine for... 15, 15 to 20 hours or something like that until we get the test results back. When we get the test results back, if you are positive, it's tata off and out, see you later, and you get kicked off. Um, if you're negative, then you go into fight camp and then you're in your bubble 
um, not allowed to come out of the bubble, basically. So it's very, very, um, it's, it's very well organised. It's you know, it's, it's very, very well, well thought out. The plans. Um, it's just not, it's not great, is it? It's just not great, especially when, when silly bollocks like me's got a fighter on the the week after as well. So literally, I'm quarantined for two weeks. So, um, so yeah, it's, um, it is what it is. Well, we'll come on to that shortly, Dave. But um, just a final thing, obviously, with fighters trying to make weight as well, I've asked everybody, yeah. we've all, every fighter or trainer, they've all said, you know, their guy is on weight, they're all perfect mm-hmm. going into fight week. But do you expect there to be any challenges to overcome just to kind of taper down, just to kind of make sure it's all bang on? Um, some will and some won't. And that's pretty much how boxing usually runs, you know. Uh, some fighters will struggle to make weight. Um, and the guys that like that will struggle with with this, um, or could struggle potentially with this, um, and and others won't. Others will, you know, I'll, I'll make weight fine. You know, I, I, whatever happens with anybody else, I'm I'm not bothered about. I know that Jordan's weight is fantastic. I'm I'm all like I said, I'm over the moon with with Scott Robinson. Um, I couldn't have him in this sort of shape and 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 be at this sort of weight without Scott Robinson. Um, you know, and between him and, and and Danny Wilson, they've done a great job with the S and C and the and the nutrition. So, as far as I'm concerned, I'm really happy where 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 Jordan Gill is. I don't know what the situation is with anybody else. Um, we're good to, today. Jordan had his last last session. Tomorrow, um, it'll be a day of travelling and then a day of quarantine. We'll have a little shake out on Wednesday because what we normally would do is do Monday, Tuesday, and then have Wednesday, Thursday off, and then you're weighing on Friday. Um, so obviously, because we're not doing Tuesday because of the quarantine and the testing and travelling, um, we'll have a little shake out Wednesday morning, um, and that'll be it. And when I say shake out, I mean a little bit of pads. That's it. Now let's come on to next week, Dave. Obviously, hope he's also fighting on um, a fight camp show. Yeah, I'm sure it would have been a lot more ideal for you if both were on the first one or on the second one together. But how how are you actually going to cope with kind of the coming week and a half? I suppose. Uh, listen, I will cope with it. However, I have to cope with it. I'll, I'll have a laugh and a joke and say I'm going to be bored shitless and it's going to do me nothing because it will. Because I'm not one of these. You know, I need to be training. I need to be doing stuff. But, you know, I can't just be cooped up somewhere. Um, I like to go for walks and things like that. So yeah, it's not gonna be great, but I'm just so happy I've got both my kids out. So I'll I will deal with it what way I've I've got to deal with it. It's not about me, it's about um my uh my boxes getting work and getting out there. So I'm just so over the moon that out of out of the four shows I've got two fighters on. So, you know, I ain't gonna sit here morning and bitching about it. I'll have a little bit of a laugh out, a little bit of whine about it. Um, but it's not the end of the world. I'll, I'll you know, touch wood. Please God, I'm still alive in two weeks, and everything's cool, and I'll come out of it then. And that's what that's what happens. I'll get on with my life then. But um, yeah, it's um, it's gonna be a challenge, isn't it? <laughs> so, so what what are Hopi's plans then? Is Hopi travelling down with you guys tomorrow and just staying? No. Boxing, or how's he gonna kind no. of? End so I'm gonna train him. I'm gonna train him in the morning. Um, he had he had a great spot today. Um, so I'm gonna train him in the morning. Um, that'll be my last session with him, obviously, and then I'm gonna come, I'm gonna travel down. Uh, he's got a sparring session on on uh, Thursday, it'll be, um, and his dad will over, overlook that for me. I'll, I'll watch it on Facetime, talk to him over Facetime, um, and then he'll join us on uh, on Monday. It's because his fight's on the Friday, so he'll join us on Monday. There's still no opponent yet announced yet for Hopi, mm-hmm. but have you kind of got an idea of who it will be? Um, this is part of boxing. This is this is how it is and how it can be, and especially in times when you can't get foreign opponents because everyone that are going through British wise, um, it's just been a you know a brick wall. Um, you know the. The the thing that I have to watch for, I mean, and I've accepted fights against kids that are, are, are nine nine and one, seven and all, oh, a lot of good kids, but you have to be careful because 
I was offered a fight against a kid that's um, a 10 round fighter that, that's a super featherweight um, unbeaten and I was like well do I think Kobe beats him yeah I actually do but then if you beat him in your, in your third fight at that at that point then you're going against everything that I've said about what I want to do with Kobe it's about education with him and I don't want him going in there beating kids and then it being even harder to get the right fight for him for his development because you know I'm not in no mad you know like Lomachenko wanting to get him get him world title as soon as possible the kid's only just 20 years old you know he's in in his time he's, he's been a pro he's been he's been with me a year now and in the year um he sparred the likes of Toka Khan he sparred the likes of um uh Lee Wood, Jordan, um, Cass Ashback, um, Raza Hamza, so many good fighters. The sparring he's getting with Kid Callard, yeah. oh my God, that is like, that is, is seriously worth its weight in gold. And I'm seeing a development on OP now because of that sparring he's been getting with, with, with Barry. And, and, I, you know, and, and I appreciate that with Barry because what I what happened in the old days was, was Bomber Graham sparring with Johnny Nelson. That developed Johnny into, into the fighter that he ended up being, where you know guys like Bomber and Brian Anderson and all them old school champions, when Johnny was a young kid, giving him all sorts of problems. And then that is part of what made him, what he learned and part of what made him become a champion. And I'm seeing that with, with, with Hope, with the spars with Barry. That shit's priceless. And so... For me, it's about education. Sporting Cass Ashback today is an Olympian. He's an unbeaten professional fighter. Raza Hamza that came down the other day, 15 and 0, unbeaten featherweight. All these good fighters, Lee Wood, dangerous, horrible, heavy handed, strong, big puncher. Sparring all these kind of fighters is bringing him on, is developing him, developing. But that's all his education. The education being taken place in, 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 in the gym. We're putting all the pieces together. But it's had two fights. It's had two fights. And we're coming out of lockdown. So things weren't perfect up to, you know, with, with the preparation in that terms until we got the gyms back. Um, but I don't want to be rushing him into fighting some guy that's, that's you know, a couple of weight divisions above a champion boxing, at, box, boxing you know, at, at two weights above him. I don't, I don't need that fight yet because... I believe stylistically, I think I believe he beats him, but there's just no point because then he's three and zero, and then every and then you know what Eddie's like? Oh yeah, well yeah, but we can't hold him back. He's, Fuck that, you know. I said when I, when he when he come when he turned pro, I want to take my time with him because he's not got his man strength yet. So the other thing is, is he, you know, it's his first six rounder. You put him in there with the wrong opponent. What you don't you don't you don't know you don't know. I don't want him to get beat by somebody because he got rushed. Or got get a cut, or got roughed up because he got rushed. You know, he's learning stuff. He's learning so much, so much in the gym, and he's a fantastic talent. I'm telling you, this kid's very, very good, very, very good. But he cannot be rushed. You know, I've, I've got no intention of, of rushing him. I want the right fights. You know, he's fought a couple of good, couple of unbeaten opponents to start off with, um, winning winning records, should I say? Um, start off with. I want to keep him on winning records. I want that, but. I'm not in no rush to be like slinging them with like 15 and 0 kids a uh, couple of weight divisions above. I'm, I'm not in no rush for that sort of stuff. So right now, that's the only person that I've said no to, but everybody else has said no to the fight. And we've gone through a lot of fights, a lot of opponents. Um, and so it is, you know, it is what it is. We saw that, you know, Echo Esselman was meant to fight on the Frank Warren show this past weekend, but he couldn't get an opponent. So he was pulled from the card. Is there a worry for you that maybe if Hopi can't get an opponent, then he won't be able to fight? It is a worry. It is a worry, yeah. It is a worry. Because um, if it comes to it, then then maybe do a... Maybe just you, you roll the dice with the guy that you think, well, you, you, you beat, but then after that, what happens then? But then it's down to his promoters then to to guarantee that moving on, you're not going to keep him at that level. You're not going to keep, you know, keep him up there um, because he's not ready for that. Because, you know, it's like when a fighter gets a world title shot against a weak champion. 
and he gets that world title and he's not he's, he's not he's not boxed at world level below he's just got that opportunity because of circumstances and he beats that guy but then he's got to keep hold of that belt and he's and he's surrounded by sharks that are better or or more experienced than him and and he don't keep hold of it i don't want to put my kid into a level that's right up there is right up in the rankings and you can't get the learning fights that you want in because none of them guys are now going to fight him so he's stuck in there with baby sharks you know i want i, I want him to I, I want him to develop uh, how i want him to he's 20 years old he's 20 years old he's a he's a brilliant talent it really is and and everybody that's sparred with him will tell you the same thing you know um so yeah uh, we'll see. We'll see. I, I've I've been around boxing long enough to see that sometimes, you know, it, it can go down to the, to the wire the last minute, and then you get that opponent. Um, I'm hoping that that's the case. Um, I'm hoping we do get somebody, but we, we shall see. We will get somebody, um, but we'll see if it's the right one or not. Just to move away from Hopi Dave and obviously onto your new recruit in the gym, Lerone Richards. Just talk to me about how Lerone settled in in his first kind of, well, I think it's what, a month or so or two months. Everything seems to. No, about, about a month, I think it is. Yeah, but I think he's, mm, yeah, about three three weeks a month. Yeah, he's met. He's, he's settled in really well, really well. He's a really nice kid. Same sort of, same type of person as, as Jordan is. Gets on well with Jordan, gets on well with Hopi. You know, he's he's a, he's a genuine kid. Uh, I'm loving working with him. And what a talent. What a serious talent. You know, he's a very, very good fighter. So, um, yeah, everything's everything's good. Everything's really good. And um, today he, uh, he's, he's put on his socials there that his uh, little boys arrived. So, so everything's good. Oh, well, congratulations, obviously, to Lerone there. Um, obviously, I have to ask about Umar Sadiq, though. Obviously, they've, they've both got mm. an agreement to face each other. Umar's come mm. out saying that Lerone's asked for a fight to be pushed back because he wasn't on weight and he's had, he doesn't well, want to no, put listen, titles online listen. and what have you. Just, can you fill us in on your thoughts on it all? No, it's, it's, it's... I don't know Umar Sadiq, right? I, I don't know him. Um, seems a nice guy. Seems he, can, he, he, he likes to chat. But he seems he likes to chat a lot of shit. And that's entirely up to him. I think he's just trying to get under their own skin or whatever. Yeah. Coming out with this, saying this, saying that. He said one thing that I think is pretty much out of line. Um, everything else is just banner. It's just, it's just boxing chat. And that's, that's, we all chat shit. We all do it. Um, and it's part of the game. Um, but if he wants to think that Lerone's struggling to do the weight, then fair enough. Let him think that. Um, the, you know, I've seen him mocking Lerone for, for um, you know, because he didn't, he didn't want to box um, July 25th because uh, his, his baby would do it. I mean, mate, I've got two kids myself. A lot of, there's a lot of parents out there. You want to be there for your kid's, kid's uh, birth, you know. And also there's the stress of, of when your, your baby's, you know, in that last bit where, when it's due, is it due, is it going to come or whatever. You can't, you can't focus on a fight like that listen boxing's great right it's great and it's life and death when you're in that ring right but there are bigger things than boxing like your kid being born when people say oh you should sacrifice that and all that that's your choice go into that position go into that position you know some people are built differently where where actually seeing you know being there for, for your kid's birth is a massive thing being there for your newborn and bonding with it is a massive thing. Nobody should be mocked for that. And I think he's wrong in, in giving out that shit. Um, because, you know, I don't know if he's a dad or what. Like I said, I don't know him. But it's quite a big thing in somebody's life. Um, and, you know, it's, it's a case of, well, you know, it, it's nothing to do his way. He's training, he's sparring, he's, he's been doing everything. But, He's also got baby due and it's, it's fucking your mind is on, on your kid, you know, as, as, as well as what you do, you cope with what you're doing in, in the gym and stuff like that. But you're on ten trucks, there's that feeling in your stomach, in your stomach. Anyone that's had a kid or had a kid due knows what it's like, you know. So it is what it is. If he wants some, if he wants some mock and, and think that, 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 that Laurent's Laurent scared of him, I don't, I don't understand why he would be scared of him. You know, it's not like he's... He, you know, we're not talking about 
a, a, a massive world superstar um, that's going to like wipe you out with you know, one shot that, you know, it's a Superman. Um, I don't even think that Ron's that kind of kid that'd be scared about that. Um, he's a very, very cool laid back kid. He's got ultimate confidence in himself and he ain't scared of anything. Um, but it's about what's, what situations are. You know, some some people might not give a shit about, you know, about the birth of the child. That's, that's their prerogative and that's their entitled to do that. But then you can't, you shouldn't be mocked for 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 actually wanting to to be there for your, for your child's birth. I don't think you should be. I think that's wrong. And, and I think, like I said, I don't think bad of him or anything like that. I just think he's wrong on, on, on that. Um, but he does like to talk and it's great because he's building the fight up. Um, and he's, he's, you know, he's making it sound as though he's just going to you know, absolutely wipe the floor with Laron. So we just look forward to when that fight gets made um, because he has to back up all his shit talk. Um, and, and, and trust me, he isn't. He isn't. Laron's a very good fighter. He's really good. He's be- he's, he's, there's not many fighters that when they've come to me or come, to me, come into my gym, spa or whatever, and, and you look at me and you just go, wow. He's a fighter that I look at, and the first time I watched him, I thought, he's got that frustrating aspect about him where you look at him and you think, go on in, go on in, do, do some more, go on in. But when he does go and he shows you that little glimpse, you just go, fucking hell, he's good. And that's what he is. Now, I want to take away the bouts and the minutes of the, go on then, go on, do it, stop admiring your work, stop letting them off the hook, you know, get some gears about yourself. That's what I want to put into him is some gears. Um, because when he goes to work, mate, that guy's good. He's very, very good. And, and Omar Sadiq, he'll, he'll, he'll find that out. I know he loves it, you know, Lerone will spend some time now with his newborn and yeah. his family, but when do you expect... They're to- still training. They're still training. They're still, they're still training. But obviously, obviously he's got his, you know, he's, he's, he's got um, a new addition. When, when do you expect to see that fight though, Dave? What, what kind of timeline have you got on it? We, so we were told that it would be, and as far as we were concerned, is, is that um, I think it is, I think it's August 29th, or that's what we, we, we assumed it to be, and, you know, but I don't know. I don't know. Uh, Sam Sam Jones and, and Adam Bale they'll look after that side of things. I don't manage Laron. Just training him. We just you know we'll just prepare for the fight. I let them deal with all the bullshit that they have to deal with. Um, but yeah, as far as we're concerned, it's it, well, what we're training for is is the end of August. Um, but I don't know. I don't. I have no idea. I have no idea. One thing It'll I... happen when it happens, but it's, it's definitely going to happen. So, so there's nobody running away from it. It's not like he's going to swerve it and go for it. He's going to give up his belts. He's going to do this. No, there's none of that shit. Um, the fight is definitely going to happen. It's just that, you know, what will outlast this fight and outlast Laron's career is his child. And that's, that's, that's what Umar's got to understand. He's put all the, he wants to see it under Laron's skin and all that he's talking. I don't really don't give a shit because he's got he's, he, he's weighing up, you know. Am I worried about what Omar Sadiq what thinks about me, or you know, do I want to be there for me for my kid? And he's he's basically weighed that up, I suppose. Dave, just a couple of quick things. I just want to get your thoughts on away from your guys and on something which I know you're obviously very passionate about. Um, we saw Joel Miller recently fail at another drugs test. I know, you know, performance enhancing drugs and drugs in sport in general is something you're, you're keen to talk about and you're very passionate on kind of trying to stamp out in whichever way it can be possible. But when you heard about Jarrell's failed test, what was your reaction to it? It's taking a piss, really. Um... It, listen, you can't be surprised when his punishment for failing three tests was what it was. So you can't be surprised, can you? And this is the the whole situation of it. And and until it gets until it gets sorted, um, then fighters are going to keep doing it. What's and the right punishment in your opinion, Dave? Oh, 
like, it's, listen, it, it doesn't matter why I think I'm not making the rules. We can all have opinions and we can all say this and all that, but we're not the ones that are in charge and we've got no, we've got no say in it whatsoever. Um, there's a lot of, it's not, it's not black and white. It's like, you can't have a, a, a kid fail on a, uh, on a stimulant, get a stronger find than a kid failing on a, on a, Head on a on a hardcore fucking steroid, you know. But yet we've had it. You know, there's no there's no consistency. There's no, I've said it before. I think you should have like tables and all the the, the drugs and and illegal substances put into categories. Category A, B, C, D. Like what they do on the street with police do with 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 drugs. You know, if it's if it's hardcore shit, boom, five years. There you go, five years. If it's an injectable, if it's something like that, no excuse whatsoever, five years. You do it again, ban for life. If it's a stimulant, fucking put X amount for that. You know, two years, whatever, a year, two years, whatever. If it's if it's a a drink off a off a shelf. A year. It's like breaking your hand. It's like it's like having an injury. A year. If you get caught with anything again, it's life. Two strikes gone. Two strikes gone. You're never gonna get a one one strike and and you're out. But then you get um, Liam Cameron. What do you get? Four four years for oh, yeah. for Cook. Something like that. You know. And when you put it in perspective. And I'm not, I'm not saying he's right to do coke or whatever, but I heard that, that the amount they took, you could, or the amount that was in his system, you could get it off of your fingers from counting money. Now, a lot of fires at his level deal with ticket money themselves. So I'm not saying that that's, that's a reason. I don't know. I don't know. I don't, I don't speak to the kids. So I don't know the exact, it's just obviously with everything blowing up and hearing stuff, hearing bits and bats, that's, that's what I hear. But um, regardless, you know, Coke's a, a recreational drug. I don't agree with myself, but there's a lot of people out there that are, that are taking it. And he's got he's got four years for that. But yet, whereas somebody can stick a needle in their arse and take hardcore peds and get a matter of months, you know. And there's too many grey areas. You know, you you, um, you can find. Oh, there's, there's there's this that's found in in meat, so therefore that trace that he's got in there. I'm not smart enough, and I don't know enough to understand how we work a way around this. But we need to, and the problem is, is because the money that's involved is the the guys that are cheating at the top level that have got all that money, the the serious superstar money. They've got all these chemists working for them, and all these 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 serious top top intelligent fuckers that know how to stay ahead they're producing shit that you can that, that'll improve your performance that's not even on the ban list yet that's not been discovered yet by your testers so they're in front they're always in front and the drug testers and and, and people like that they're, they're chasing and that is his problem that's his problem because they're just moving on moving on the the the, the cheating industry is just generating just so much money that that I don't have the answer for it. All I know is that it's it's fucked up. And so, you know, when when if if ever it happens that that a fighter is injured and the other guy fails a drug test, should be jail time. So my final question, just away from that, is I know you actually still got to pack um, ahead of tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> I know it kept you longer than what you. <laughs> <laughs> there's a lot of talk at the minute about Canelo once again and who he may well face next there's a lot of talk he could well be a British fighter Billy Joe Saunders ruling himself out seems Callum Smith is potentially the front runner at the minute John Ryder was spoken about at one point Jason Quigley out of the names that are being mentioned who would you like to see in the ring with Canelo next well if Billy Joe's ruled himself out and he's, he's not having the fight then Callum Smith I think um, you know, Ring Magazine champion. He's done what he's done. He needs that big fight. He needs that, you know, that that career defining fight. 
I hope Callum Smith gets it. Um, failing that, then then why not John Ryan? I'd rather have a Brit get it than than somebody else. I'd, you know, I, I'd, yeah, that's that's my order. That's my order anyway. Who do you think? Whether or not it happens, I don't know. Obviously, Callum and Billy Joe, you know, very two very very different styles. But mm-hmm. who do you think would have actually given or could give Canelo a, a tougher fight? Billy Joe, stylistically, stylistically, Billy Joe. Um, we've seen in the past that Canelo will struggle with that sort of style, and a fit, motivated Billy Joe Saunders is fucking brilliant. You know, he he might upset people with, with stuff he says. It might not be everybody's cup of tea with it, what with what he does in the ring or whatever, and, and you know his style. But his style and what he does, he's brilliant at, and he's got a very good brain. He's got a very good brain. So I think stylistically, he would be the one that would give Canelo the hardest night, the trickiest night, and that's the fight that I would love to see because of that. I would want to see that fight. Dave, we will leave up there now, and I will leave you to go and pack before you get into any trouble with your family. Um, it's been a pleasure to catch up with you. I'll hopefully speak to you after Saturday night. Um, thank you for your time, Cheers. as always, and thank you for speaking to Boxing Social. Thanks a lot, mate. Cheers. It's good to be back as well. It's good to be back. 